Okay. Hi. It's, uh, Reverend Sarah Bowen, take it away. All right. Welcome everyone to this night of wisdom and practice. Many of you here tonight already know Jonathan, uh, but for those of you who auspiciously found us on social media or from one of your friends told you about what we were doing tonight, I just want to tell you a few things about this amazing, amazing being. Jonathan Hammond has devoted his life to being deeply committed to empowering and healing people by bringing indigenous earth wisdom to the modern world. And I'm going to ask Jonathan to mute himself while I talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> I love partnership. Jonathan is a master teacher and faculty member for Shamanic Reiki Worldwide. He's a traditional Utsui Reiki master, an ordained interfaith minister, and ordained I'm going to really mess up this word, but Alakai Guide with Aloha International. He's completed core curriculum through the Foundation of Shamanic Studies. He's got certifications in Cherokee bodywork, Huna, Haponopono. He's apprenticed with shamans in Brazil, Mexico, Bali, and Hawaii. Yes, Jonathan gets around. And he also runs yoga and spirituality retreats around the world when it's open, as well as workshops here at One Spirit and at the Omega Institute in Rhinebeck. He runs a thriving spiritual counseling and shamanic practice, yes, even on Zoom. And I must mention that he and his husband, Dominic, share their home with a rambunctious pug named Lord Bartholomew Archer. Jonathan regularly offers these shamanic circles like the one we're having here tonight. And yet tonight is a very, very special night as he shares his first book, The Shaman's Mind, Huna Wisdom to Change Your Life from Monkfish Publishing. For those of you that write, I probably don't have to tell you how much work goes into a book and how it changes your life. And for those of you that read, I probably don't have to tell you about how much can be gained from a great book and how reading it can change your life, but I'm going to anyway for just a moment. While I was reading an early draft of The Shaman's Mind, I was blown away by the accessibility of Jonathan's writing how he gently introduces the reader to complex concepts in ways that are directly applicable to our lives. The shaman's mind is both practical and inspiring. It teaches us how to transform our minds to see through an age old lens. It empowers us to create the internal change we need to live in this complex world and how to bring healing to ourselves and the many, many beings on this planet that really need healing. So, I urge you to leave tonight without getting a copy of this book. Uh, if we were in person, I would be standing with a massive stack of them and Jonathan would be pen in, pen in hand. But since we can't do that, you can obviously get it from Amazon and Barnes and Noble if you don't have it already. And I want to tell you about IndieBound.org, I-N-D-I-E-B-O-U-N-D.org. I'll put the link in the chat later. Uh, that's a way that you can order books uh, from your local bookstore, or you can just call them on the phone tomorrow and say, I must have the Shaman's Mind. If you already have a copy, thank you. Thank you for supporting Jonathan. And without further ado and subtle sales pitch, I will hand you over to Emily to get the circle started. Thank you, Sarah. So we're going to start by getting connected. So you can close your eyes if you like. And let's take three deep breaths together as a circle. Breathing in and release on a sigh. <sighs> a deep nourishing breath in and release on a sigh. <sighs> And one more deep embodied breath in and release on a sigh. <sighs> and now feel your embodied presence. Notice the quality of your breath. The life force happening within you. And tune into the energy within you, perhaps right in the center of your chest in your heart space. And tonight we're going to tune into the energy of aloha. 
and you may know aloha as a greeting or a word for love, but the definition of this word is to share life force. So feel into the life force in your heart space. You might have a sensation there. You might bring up a feeling of compassion, of joy. And with your imagination, extend this energy, this beautiful life force within you and connect it to each heart in this circle. Sharing this beautiful gift you have, this life force within you, quality of love, of understanding, of support, connection, non-judgment, joy. And feel what we create together as a circle, as a sacred circle, bonded in the energy of aloha. And just for a moment, allow yourself to receive those connections, that life force being shared with you. Open your heart to it. And let's take another deep breath together. Breathing in, breathing in aloha, breathing out aloha. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. And thank you, Sarah. Sarah Bowen is a uh, award-winning author in her own right. And we have the same publisher and uh, she has a very special book out, um, her latest book called uh, Spiritual Rebel, which is all about um, rebelliousness through the interfaith lens. It's really, it's an incredible book. And so that's why I wanted her to uh, uh, to be here tonight as a as a fellow author and thank you Emily Wallace and Rianne just say hello Rianne Vestuto who is my long term student and uh, and uh, just say hello Rianne uh, hi good 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 all right so uh, uh, let's get started so um, you know I, I, when when this was all arranged many months ago I. Uh, I just thought I was gonna do, yay, Jonathan wrote a book event, but, uh, and that was pre-COVID. Uh, and so, yay, Jonathan wrote a book event, doesn't really feel appropriate. So uh, instead, I'm gonna use some, um, some ideas in the book, uh, and a lot of ideas that aren't in the book that are actually, I think this is my next, next book, uh, to, um, to help you all cope, to help you all, we're going through a scary time, we're going through a, a really difficult time, and, um, and there are ways in which we can keep ourselves safe and well through shamanic practice and through seeing through indigenous mind. And so uh, it's my hope tonight that, that I help you enter into that in a way, in ways that are, are practical for you. So I'm going to start with, um, I'm just going to read the preface of, of my book. It's not very long. Uh, and I'm doing it because, um, because it's, it's weird. I wrote it two years ago and I, I um, and it, it's more re it, it's it's more relevant than it than it was back then. And uh, and if you've read it, if you've read it, just bear with me because I'm I will eventually talk about um, some ideas in the preface because it really speaks to this time on the planet. So I'm just going to read this and so just sit back. It's a book event, so I'm reading. So just bear with me. Okay, <clears throat> the preface. So this is uh, this is the 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 very first thing in the book. The book this book is about becoming a finder and no longer a seeker. It is about truly healing. It is about learning to love yourself, to think straight, to step into wellness, prosperity, and love, and to feel the inner satisfaction of these attainments to such a degree that the inevitable response is to give yourself back to the world. Imagine yourself so well, so full, and so supported that you can't help but want to spread your good fortune around. 
In every given moment, each of us has a glorious opportunity to release our self-limiting stories, learn to live from our true nature, and become the highest and brightest expression of ourselves. And I know no better, more practical, or more effective system to guide you there than Huna, the esoteric knowledge and philosophy of Hawaii. We are currently in the midst of an immense, difficult, and sometimes terrifying planetary shift of consciousness. We are on the brink of complete unsustainability. We cannot continue our current ways without careening toward destruction. The Cree tribe of North America speaks of a contagious psycho-spiritual disease of the human soul, a virus or parasite of the mind that is currently manifesting itself in the form of unprecedented conflicts and crises on a global scale. This wicked spirit which terrorizes and cannibal cannibalizes others is called Wetiko or the Wetiko virus. In Hawaiian, it is referred to as Eepa, which means deceit that passes comprehension. Wetiko or Eepa is born of our disconnection from the natural world and it operates by covert infestation of the human psyche, compelling us through toxic selfishness to act against our own best interests by blinding us to our own insanity, destruction for profit, massive hoarding of wealth, allowing suffering without compassion, dehumanizing others, and recklessly exploiting natural resources. Wetiko, however, is not non-local. In other words, it doesn't have any substantive material existence except in our own minds. This points to an incredible intrinsic power and deep personal responsibility within each of us to make a difference in this world by cultivating our own individual consciousness, by cleaning up our own mess and making ourselves so well that we can have a positive influence on all of life and on all of those whom we touch. Quantum physics po posits the quantum inseparability principle. Every atom affects every other atom everywhere because everything influences everything else in every direction and in every which way in time. This means that everything we do matters. How we think and live ha has energetic reverberations that affect all beings everywhere. The microcosm of our individual selves is the macrocosm of the entire planet and beyond. There is no separation. I can only guess that if you're holding this book or attending tonight, you feel a deep calling and personal need to be part of the global solution. And because we are all inseparably connected in this one universe, even the simple yearning to live our best lives contributes vitally toward this deeper intentionality. In the last 50 years, we've become inundated with consciousness expanding esoteric wisdom from a host of indigenous and spiritual traditions, and it's for good reason. A contemporary spiritual movement, an army of light workers is formed uh, to prepare and fortify millions for the changes ahead. This has al already been prophesied. The Quechuan people who live in the high Andes of South America call this time in which we now live the fifth Pachacuti. A Pachacuti is a 500 year er interval and this particular one is an era in which as their legend states, the eagle and the condor will fly together in the same sky. According to the Quechua, the previous 2000 years were dominated by the eagle a visionary but materialistic bird, one connected to seeing vast distances, the intellect and the masculine principles of growth and movement. Over the last 2000 years, the eagle's influence was seen in the huge advancements and discoveries that took place in science, medicine, and technology. But the fifth Pachacuti, which we now inhabit, is a time when the feminine, spiritual, and environmentally-minded condor will begin to dance together with the eagle, restoring balance and harmony with her intuitive earth wisdom. The Quechua believe that the condor embodies such sacredness that she might not actually fly, but can somehow spiritually move herself. In the Quechuan prophecy, during the fifth Pachacuti, the one we're in now, the entrance of the condor will come about with the help and support of those humans who espouse earth-honoring ways, those who live in right relation with themselves and their environment, and those who choose to lean into the interconnectivity of all things. And that is you.
The best way to fight the Wetiko, a epa demon, is to start by naming it. By naming it, we diminish its power. Then we lend ourselves through the inner rainbow light of our hearts and minds to anyone and anything which for, ever reason, for whatever reason has lost their way or had their freedoms diminished. We do this not only through the actions that we take in the world, but by cultivating a consciousness when our, within our own minds that always leads us to, toward choice, possibility, and the highest levels of inclusivity. The Hawaiians call this consciousness aloha. The word aloha is a commonplace greeting in Hawaii, and it's often translated as love, but it has great spiritual significance as well. In Hawaii, aloha is considered an attitude, an ethic, and a means for change. It means to share life force with another, using the essence of love as an expression of our life force in order to further creation. This is an utterly natural process because creation itself, as you will find in the pages that follow, is made of the very stuff that is aloha, the love that is in alignment with what we consider to be the highest elevated qualities of spirit, grace, forgiveness, compassion, gentleness, and kindness. To learn to infuse your thinking mind and therefore your, your, your uh, external life with the potent force of aloha is to do your part to confront Witiko and help the condor lift off to the tallest and most transcendent heights. If enough of us learn to do this for ourselves, the Witiko demon will be no match for what we can accomplish individually and globally. Now, if you don't feel a connection to the Hawaiian islands, pay that no mind. I often refer to Hawaiian shamanism as shamanism, just with better beaches. The wisdom contained in this book transcends the culture from which it came because it points towards universal truths that open us to love. And as we open, so does the world. If you're reading this, you are operating under some vestige of freedom. At the very least, you have enough choice and space in your life to delve into this material and choose what you want to do with it. But there are so many beings, people, rivers, animals, oceans, and trees who, for whatever reason, don't have that same luxury. So read this book for them. Show up for yourself for them. Make yourself well for them. Awaken your interior magic for them. It's definitely you first, but they all need you too. Because the truth is we as a collective no longer have time for you not to do this. Make hey aloha, Jonathan. So I want to talk about two things. Uh, just in that last bit, I want to talk about um, make, uh, that it's definitely you first. So this is why it's you first. It's you first because all power lies, it comes from within. That is one of the principles in Huna, which means that anyone who is inflicted with this toxic selfishness, with this, with this Wetiko virus, can only heal themselves because they want and choose to heal themselves. So you have no influence over them. So the reason why I say it's you first is because what you can do is be an example for them to emulate. And to be an example is to live in right relationship with the earth. And if you're living in right relationship with the earth, you are following the path of love because the, earth, the, the earth's intentionality is one of love, which I'll go into later. And so the best that we can each individually do is provide through our own example, something to emulate that says to the people who are so stricken and so fearful and so closed down and so self-loathing and so willing to cannibalize themselves and others, there's a better way. If you're following the path of love in, 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 this, uh, in this philosophy, in the Huna philosophy, love is synonymous with happiness. So if happiness is present, love is there and happiness creates love. So that means that if we are following the path of love, we are creating happiness and happiness helps those people go, ooh, I'll have what he's having. And that's all we can do. And that's why it's so important that we do our own inner work. Drama. So I wanna take you into the Hawaiian universe in order to take you right back home and use it. Okay. So, uh, and, and, and this isn't in my book, but will help you understand what I mean by earth wisdom, what I mean by living in right relation, what I mean by being in, uh, uh, in concert, in, in uh, uh, communication, in, um, uh, uh, in harmony with the earth, because the earth is gonna win. So we wanna be in harmony with her, right? Okay, 
So uh, I'm going to give you just some, some, uh, a way into the Hawaiian universe. And as I do, I don't want you to think about the Hawaiian words. I don't you think that you're learning something, nothing like that. I want you to just open your imagination with what I'm going to share with you about indigenous mind that comes from, from the Hawaiian people. So there's a word in Hawaiian called haena. And Emily's going to type that word in, haena. So haena means, uh, uh, ha means uh, life force, breath. Ena means intense, and, it, you, uh, and it usually uh, intense heat or the intense heat of the sun. So haena is the breath of the sun. So in Hawaiian, the Hawaiian language doesn't point at reality. It actually uh, elicits what the experience of reality is. So when the sun rises in the east and we feel the sun's warmth on our face, we breathe out ha. And when the sun sets in the west and we see it moving down the horizon toward uh, 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 at, at dusk, we breathe out <sighs> And so everything in the Hawaiian cosmology is a connective experience. Not only do we exhale ha as, as we feel the heat, uh, the, the heat of the sun, but so does the earth. So haena is about when the heat of the sun uh, uh, rises in the east, it begins to titillate the earth. It begins to, uh, to make the earth want to sacrifice its own breath. This is called transpiration, or what the Hawaiians called laka. And this is, this is where, the, where the earth sacrifices its own breath in response to the sun, which then creates mist. And this air and this mist that has water in it begins to rise. And this, this mist that rises, the Hawaiians call ohu. And what's important about that is just that the Hawaiians have a word for mist that rises. That's how tuned in they are. So this ohu, this mist rises. And when it gets to a certain atm atmosphere, it begins to collect even more water and begins to get heavy. And the mist that is now heavy and laden with water begins to descend. And the Hawaiians call this descending mist uhu vai. At the top of the Hawaiian jungle, in the Hawaiian forests, there's something called ohu vai, which are water collectors. These are plants, these are trees, and these are also these vast spider webs that actually collect this, uh, this, uh, this uh, atmosphere that's laden with water and, and methodically drip that water back into the earth and the process begins again. This is a process that has been going on literally since the beginning of time. So the hula dancer celebrates this cycle because anything that continues on like this, does so because it wants to keep going. And you're a part of that. We're all a part of that. So the hula dancer centers themselves into the Hawaiian universe. And the transpiration, the exhale of the earth, which I've said is called Laka, is the name of the goddess of the hula. Because the hula dancer exhales into this oneness. So the hula dancer uh, uh, adorns their body with, with uh, foliage from the forest, adorns their feet and their hands, calling in the energies of the jungle, adorns their body with shells, calling in the energies of the sea and their friends in the sea, which they consider to be family or ancestors. The Hawaiians then use sacred text and it's the same sacred text that has been used for thousands of years and the same movements that have been, thousand, it been used for thousands of years in order to, to, to connect them to a lineage that has gone before and a lineage that will continue. In Huna, in shamanism, we think of all time happening in the present moment, that all time simultaneously happens only in the now. And so by, by bringing all of these forces together and aligning the consciousness with the all and with this vast lineage, the, the hula dancers enter into what is called the haka ka'au or the dance of light, or an, as one Hawaiian culturalist uh, um, uh, uh, wrote about, the portal. And in that portal, body, mind, spirit, nature, all of it, 
comes together into one, one whole. And the honor of the hula dance, what the hula dancers would say is the honor of doing this is not that they step into the portal, but that they can invite others into it who are witnessing it. And so that portal of body, mind, and spirit, nature, that is what we are, um, th that is what we are attempting to do from a shamanic point of view. Now, how? That seems like it's some big stuff. So, so um, let me give you one more, one more Hawaiian word that will help you. So there's a, um, uh, there's a word called na'au. And na'au is uh, two inches below your navel. We all have one deep within you, connected to your pelvis, connected to your gender, connected to your creative center. And it is there where Mother Earth, and she is our mother, we come from her, we return to her, she created us, we're made of her, and she wants to keep going, and she wants people on her who will help her keep going. And she speaks to us through that na'au, through the, and na'au is translated as guts or intestines, and it's most, most pointed definition, the heart of the mind. And at this time on the planet, with so much going on, with so, much, uh, so many fearful things, so many scary things, um, uh, uh, where, where there's a sense of, am I supposed to move? I know you're all feeling it. Am I supposed to move? Am I supposed to leave my job? Am I supposed to enter into a new job? When am I supposed to move? All of that you will find, I promise, if you tune into your gut instinct. And so, and, and, and in your gut instinct is the wisdom of the mother who just wants to love you and who will guide you. And it's that feeling inside that said, this feels right, this doesn't feel right. Or it's a feeling inside that says, I don't know and that's the answer. And that's a big one right now. I don't know and that's the answer and it's not time. And so we are, so to live in right relationship with the earth is to connect with our instinctual selves. And in doing so, we enter into the great oneness. We enter into the portal, into the hakaka'au, just by, by being in relationship with the earth. So that's earth wisdom. So what I want to do is I want you to feel it. So I want you to all just close your eyes. Just take a moment. We're going to do a meditation. You're going to feel all of this. It's one thing to talk about it. It's another to feel it. And shamanism is so much about feeling. So the, our feelings and our emotions, our felt sense in our body, that is how we access the earth wisdom. That is how we access all spirit. Good, so feel yourself sitting deeply in your body. So you're not going anywhere in this meditation. You're not floating away and stay with me, stay with me. So rather than floating away, just think I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in the temple, I am in my body. Feel yourself inside your, your heavy earth body and notice that as you sit in your body, you are made of the same substance as the earth. Water is flowing through you. You're 80% water, air is flowing through you. Feel your breath. Each exhale, is a sacrifice to keep going. Each inhale, you're receiving life. Feel your own breath, the same breath that the earth breathes. Feel your bones made of earth and feel that aliveness inside of you, that passion inside you, that fire inside you, that life force inside you, feel that. All of nature is happening right now through you. You are not separate from her. And as you sit, allowing the same energy that grows the forest, the same energy that moves the tides, the same energy that spins the earth, that is your aliveness, that is your nature. Your heart is beating itself, your ears are attuning to my, to my uh, voice. All the little internal physical processes happening in your body with no help from that thinking mind that you call you. That's nature. Good, now I want you to feel yourself sitting on the mother, on the earth. Feel the whole globe beneath you. And you emerged into this world from her. 
So feel your deep connection to her. So tune in now with the soils and the sands and the underground root systems and the oceans and the waterways around you, right where you are in your own space. Just feel yourself sitting on the earth, cradled by the earth and feel her loving intention. She provides you with everything that you need. She provides you even with instinctual wisdom that will keep you safe during this time. Feel that and breathe with that. Come home to that. Come home to the mother supporting you, providing you with a platform with which to have experience, with which to have your life, asking almost nothing in return. Feel that deep love from her. still sitting in your body, deeply connected to all that is below you. Now, without changing anything, just become aware of, this, of, the, of the space around your head and your shoulders, the space in the room that you're in, just around you. And without leaving your body or the connection to the earth, begin to extend your consciousness upward, upward past the ceiling, up into the night sky, if it's nighttime where you are, up over the city or the town in which you're in, up into the clouds, up into the grays and the blues and the blacks, into the starry spaces, feel yourself, just use your imagination, connect out as far as you can and notice or create a grid of healing light surrounding the planet, a lattice work of healing light that surrounds the planet. You could think of this lattice work being the home of spirit guides or healing light or angel energy, or the great chi, or the prana. And just know that, that this healing grid of light around the planet awaits only you to ask it for what it is that you want. And how do you know what it is that you want? You, you feel into what keeps you in alignment with the earth what keeps you in alignment with the values of the earth, interconnection, freedom, equality, love, abundance. To live in those qualities is to live in conjunction with the earth's intention. And all you need to do for in whatever way those things, those things might be lacking in your life is to simply ask these light beings that surround the planet that wait for you to ask for your help. Let all that be there and now go deep into your na'au, two inches below your navel, into your gender, into your pelvis, into your creative source. Feel the aliveness there. Feel your creative source there. Feel that instinctual place deep within you, two inches below your navel and deep inside you, deep inside your pelvis. And knowing that you are connected to all of this, allow yourself to just bring to mind something that you're that you need clarity on in your life it might be that you're contemplating a move it might be that you are wondering if you're in the right place it might be that you're wondering about something about your job or work whatever that thing is for you and it might be more than one thing but allow that to just be there and knowing that the na'au that that two inches below your navel that deep gut that it is through that that the earth in all her wisdom and all her love for you speaks to you and she speaks to you through that instinct and just now let your now speak about this subject does it feel right does it feel wrong does it feel like it's not time does it feel like not yet does it feel like I don't know? Just feel that. Connect yourself to the Earth's wisdom. She loves you and she will guide you through your instincts. She will keep you safe and she speaks to you through this area of your body. 
if you align with her, you align with the winning team. Good. Now everything that we've created together is simply who you are. It's who you've always been. We're just extending our awareness in order to feel it. And this is something that you can always come back to knowing that underneath you is a mother that just wants to keep going and wants you to keep going too. And with all of that, let's just take one deep breath together, breathing in, big inhale, releasing on a sigh, whatever doesn't serve, whatever you wanna let go of. And when you feel ready, you can just reorient yourself with the room that you're in, with wherever you are, and come back into your space. Good, welcome back. So what I'd like you to do is um, we're gonna share our vibration. So this is just one word. We're gonna do some questions after this, but one word that will just help you, uh, that will just indicate to the group where you are right now. What's the one word that comes up after this meditation? You can just type that into the chat and Rianne is gonna read those. Aligned, create, lofty, comforted, peaceful, love, peaceful, patience, curiosity, present, peace, love, in harmony, om, peaceful, peaceful, opened, patience, here, empty, hopeful, change, serene, gentle, open, letting go, clear, somber, pure, not now, even, peace, loved and supported. Very good. Good. Thank you all. So I think um, uh, let's just take uh, if there's if there's any questions or any sharing, let's just uh, we've got plenty of time. Let's take that now. Um, if anyone has anything, um, uh, you know how to do it. Just um, uh, you can just raise your hand and um, unmute yourself and we'll, we'll just get a couple questions or sharings. Don't be shy. And I'd love people who, would ne who wouldn't necessarily do that to do that. Uh, looks like Renato raised his hand. Renato, can you unmute your mic? Can you hear me now? Yeah, hi Renato. Hi, hi Jonathan. You mentioned uh, first off, thanks so much for that meditation. It was really, it was really centering. Good. Um, you mentioned that you wrote this two years ago, and obviously things were pretty wild back then. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, have only gotten more wild. Mm -hmm. I'm. I'm curious how, uh, what's changed or what's transformed? Uh, just, I'd love to hear more about what's changed in those two years since you wrote it and how you feel about what you wrote now. Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess just that, that um, I think what's changed is that it, it's gotten worse, you know, and, um, you know, these certainly weren't, weren't um, you know, uh, the Wetiko virus that's not a new idea that's been around for a long time. Uh, I think more than anything else, it's, um, it's, for me, it's, it's, uh, what, it's kind of what we have to go on. Earth wisdom is, is, is for me what I have to go on. You know, it's the only thing that I, I can, uh, I can rely on. I mean, I really do mean it when I say that, like, like, um, that, uh, and I think, I think that it, despite the fact that I've been a shamanic practitioner or a shamanic teacher, I think that I really understood what earth wisdom is about three weeks ago. I think it just like all of a sudden something clicked in where it was like, um, where it just occurred to me that, um, that I have to stay, we all at this time, we just have to stay so close to ourselves and to pull away from ourselves and to pull into shoulds and to pull into fears about money and to pull into um, uh, what other people think and to pull into, yeah, but it used to be like that yesterday. None of that is helpful to us. 
And the only thing that's helpful to us is the now. You know, in, in, um, in Huna, one of the principles is now is the moment of power. So now, it, now is the only place where you can access power because now is the only place you can do anything. And so, so um, to be in the now is um, uh, not the now, but the now, uh, but to be in the now is, um, is to access that, um, that instinctual wisdom. Because I, and I even think instinct is more important than love right now. Love is just, lo love is just, uh, uh, that's just there. It's the instinct that we need now because we have to keep ourselves safe. Um, so that more than anything else that, that, um, and I feel like, I feel like that's what, what the earth more than anything else provides for us. Does that help? Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for now. Good. Anything else? No, we can go on. Timothy is waving. Oh, good. Yeah. Jonathan, hand. we have a couple, oh, we good. Have a couple real hands. <laughs> I see. I think Timothy was first. Good. Hi, Timmy. Uh, hi, Jonathan. How are you? Good. Um, so um, thank you for that meditation. Uh, I'm, I'm a little more than halfway through the book. I'm just curious about if you could talk a little bit about the practice of giving blessings as a way of connecting to the earth as a daily practice. Yeah. So, um, uh, so you know, in Huna, we, th we say that, like, you know, uh, that your thoughts create reality you know, and that there are energetic considerations there as well, that what you focus on and what you give attention to elicit energies that bring about the nearest physical equivalent of whatever you're giving your focus and attention to. So what we're thinking about elicits energy that creates, uh, that creates existence and creates existence itself. And so um, when, when we, and so to bless, which is a cornerstone practice uh, in, um, uh, in the Huna philosophy, to bless what it is that you want is to put you in the energetic current of, the, of getting that thing, because then you're in the energy of it. And so, and so, um, and so usually when, when someone has something that we don't want, we withhold and we feel jealous or we feel like, uh, you know, why not me or all of that. But instead what, what this practice is saying is, is to bless what it is that you want. You know, so in, in, in so I go through a whole, whole bunch of practices in the book. If you if you want a better body, you bless the people. You do the things you need to do to get a better body. But you you know you bless the people who have the bodies that you that, that you want. If you want to be in a certain place in your career, you bless the person who's already there, and you bless the things in you that are going to get you there. And that keeps you in the the creative flow of things. Why is it connected to nature? Because nature is in a constant expression of yes. Nature doesn't have low self esteem. Nature doesn't say no to itself. Nature doesn't deny itself what's good for it or what it needs. Nature just, nature, uh, you know, the forest just roots down into the soil and takes in the rain because that's, that's what I need. That's what, so, you know, nature is in a constant expression of growth and creation. And so if there's something in your life that it has not yet come into fruition, to bless it is to put you in that growth, growthful and creative um, process. Does that help? Um, if I could just, um, yeah. I'm just curious, like in the process of giving a blessing then, yeah. um, it seems clear that like we need to be connected to the energy of appreciation and gratitude, but is there also energy of want? Like, is that really like, I want, you know, more nature, I want a better body, I want health, I want whatever, like, is that energy also there in the giving of the blessing? Yeah, and, and the wanting is, you know, the wanting is, um, is really important because it's who you are. See, like, like, you know, if we are all a spark of the divine, if we are all an aperture through which the divine sees itself, then that means that the stuff that you want is really, really important. It's scripture what you want. You know, so to want that is to, is to align, to, to want what you want. And you got to look at what you want. If you, I mean, you know, if you want a fancy, you know, Mercedes, your growth and creation to lead, that lead toward your self-investment. You know that those things are um, that those things are are divine things. They are of divinity. You know, and so it, this is it's not about egotistical. It's not about selfish, and it's not about material. You know, it's it, it it's about that that in in wanting and yearning, we're reaching toward what's held in the higher self. What's held in when we think of what's what's me at my most inspired self. You know, that if you imagine what that is, that's what, that's what all that wanting is leading you toward. Does that help? 
Yeah, two more. Lauren, go ahead. Hi. Hi. Hi, honey. How are you doing? Good to see you. I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm very happy to be here. Um, so I, I'm going to just kind of dialogue a little bit because, oh, I'm nervous because all these people are listening. Okay. <laughs> um, I saw a video of you on the Kevin Moore show and I immediately brought your book afterwards because I am Gnostic and, um, I've been Gnostic for a long time and it's rare to hear and see more I think like Gnosticism is a thing but then it's you know like the modern what is modern Gnosticism and, and mm -hmm. I, it was just like oh my gosh it's coming from you that's awesome a lot mm -hmm. the the Huna principles are exactly yeah Gnostic yeah um I came to it from Sylvia Brown I was mm -hmm. part of the church mm -hmm. um I think my question is more about your journey because I am currently a psychic medium and I work with people and um, my readings are, are very open and I try to pull from them, like help guide them towards that inner knowing. And I've never been into shamanism before because mm -hmm. I think I've, been introduced to maybe lower forms of the practice mm -hmm. in some ways um but what is your like professional journey and i noticed that you right. um, received counseling training through one spirit and i was looking that up yeah um but i noticed in my readings that i really want to delve in deeper with people and kind of in a counseling way i can see what needs to kind of be unfolded within well, that. Let me give you, a, I'm, I'm, I don't want to go through my, my, my life journey just because of time, but let me say this. Let me say this. That, that, you know, one of the easiest things you can do as a practitioner, and if you're not a practitioner, just something to think about in your life, is that if there's something, if a client is presenting something that they don't like, you know, that's going on in their life that they don't like, they easy, just remember that, that from, according to this philosophy, everything is born of your thoughts which means that if there's something they don't like, that there's something, doesn't mean that it's conscious, but it means that there's something in them that says that that thing that isn't okay is perfectly okay. There's a belief, there's a, a sense of self, whatever it is. And so the easiest way, you know, the easiest way to, to look at what's going on with someone inwardly or to look at yourself inwardly is to look at your life and what it is that you don't like is a reflection of something in, inside you. So even, if, you know, when, when, I, uh, when someone gives me a compliment, I think of it like that's an angel speaking to that per person to get to me. And when I get negative feedback from the world, what, that, that is uh, something reflected in that person about me that I have to look at. Because I created the negative feedback. Okay. Yeah, I completely agree. That's how I see things too. It's a really beautiful journey. Thank you for sharing it. Good. Good. One more. We'll, we'll only do one more because we got to move on. Go Linda, ahead, Linda. Or... Me, Linda? <laughs> yes. Uh, hi, Linda. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say I caught your interview with Michael Sandler and I loved it and I felt really um, moved to buy your book and to come to the Oh, good. Studio. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask, you know, I, I'm successful in staying grounded most of the time, and I'm, I, you know, I, I feel that I'm sort of moving in the right direction. But what do you do to address fear when fear comes up, you know, and, and it sort of just hits you and blocks you, especially at this time? Mm -hmm. Do you have some, something that could be useful to, to sort of take a step back, maybe? I mean, um, you know, I, I, I just think, uh, uh, I think you can't, you can't, um, you can't pretend it's not there. Mm. You can't, you know, and that's not it. You, and you, you can't bemoan the fact that it's there. You have to attend to it. And, and um, you know, the, the, the best way to, uh, um, 
I remember one time I was doing one of those retreats that that I um, that I've done in the past, and I was in Mexico, and I was on this um, like three story diving board, and it, we were diving into like a cenote or whatever, and um, and I, you know I've been working with these people for t you know for ten days or whatever, um, you know, and doing shamanic circles with them and healing and all of that, and I got to the top of this thing, and I was and I was scared, and um, and I uh, and I knew everyone's looking at me, and I knew that I had to jump you know? And so as I got to the, the edge, I just kept saying as loud as I could, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. And I yelled, I'm scared all the way down into the water. And one of the persons in the, um, people in the retreat said, out of everything that you said, this is, was actually the deepest teaching to me, oh. you know? So I think it's about like acknowledging that it's there and carrying on this part. And what, it, what is courage? Having the fear and, and carrying on anyway. Okay. What is purpose? Having the doubt and carrying on anyway. Super. Thank you so much. Yeah. That, that's great. Good. Good. Let's go to, I want to do um, uh, one more section. Is everyone okay? So I, so something funny happened. I was on the phone. No, people don't know this, but nothing sees the light of day until Emily Wallace waves her magic wand and says, Jonathan, that's good. And so uh, everything I, everything we, we do, I always have, everything that I do, um, Emily has to uh, speak to. So I was texting with Emily, or, or I was talking with Emily about what this was going to be. And, uh, and we were texting back and forth. And then the last thing she wrote was, um, and you know, we had decided what it was. And then the last thing she wrote, she said, do po, P-O. And I thought she wants me to do po. Now, po is a Hawaiian word, which we're going to talk about. Um, and, uh, and I thought she wants me to do the section on Poe. So then the next day, uh, she said, oh, I'm sorry about that. That must've been like a pocket dial or whatever. I don't know what do Poe means. I said, oh, I thought you wanted me to do Poe. And she goes, oh my God, that's so weird. And it is so weird. So we're going to do Poe. So I'm going to read you about Poe. Okay. Uh, so this is the, the, uh, the second, um, uh, the second little section that I want to go through. And then we're going to do a journey on this material. It's not too long. All right, so this is about creation from, from, the, uh, from the Hawaiian perspective and from actually from the shamanic perspective. So the word shaman comes originally from the Tungusic tribes of Siberia. And while it's most often defined as an indigenous healer, another esoteric translation is one who sees in the dark. It is in the darkness that one develops the shaman's mind for the darkness holds the mystery. The shaman's domain is the hidden and invisible realms, those in-between places and worlds that the shaman navigates to receive information, retrieve lost power, and commune with the spirits. I often speak of consensus reality being like one small slice of an apple pie that you're eating, and shamanic reality, the unseen, being equivalent of the entire rest of the, of the pie. There is so much that does not meet the eye. In Hawaiian cosmology, the visible and the invisible coexist together. Manifest reality, a'o, a-o, means light or day in Hawaiian. And it's born of a vast expanse of creative potential, a womb of inception from which all life emerges. The Hawaiians called this po, which, means, which is translated as night or darkness. And also interestingly, the realm of the gods. So it's in the darkness that the Hawaiians uh, to think of that as the realm of the gods. In Hawaiian thought, darkness contains spiritual intelligence and it's from darkness that life itself springs forth. In the Western psyche, darkness has a pejorative connotation. The creation story of Genesis in the Old Testament speaks of a God separating the light from the dark and calling the light good. Darkness became synonymous with evil, separate and distinct from the light, something to be avoided and transcended or a place where one is exiled for punishment. But for the Hawaiians, the new day begins not at sunrise, but at sunset. It is the nighttime dream of the Po that creates the waking life of A'au. A'au also means enlightened consciousness. And this is significant because it implies that the daytime of our manifest existence is a kind of paradise, or at least it has the potential to be. So rather than God, heaven, and earth being separate from each other, as Genesis suggest suggests, in the beginning was God and God created heaven and earth. According to Hawaiian shamanism, we are thrust into a shamanic reality that says heaven is right here and God is too. And we can find them by going into our hidden and darkest aspects and allowing them to merge from there. The creation chant of Hawaii called the Kumulipo, translated as the pattern of unseen or the beginning in deep darkness, tells the story of all of the earth's inhabitants, 
plants, animals, people being birthed during a vast cosmic night. In her book, The Sacred Power of, of Huna, Spirituality and Shamanism in Hawaii by Rima Morel, she cites a line from the Kumu Lipo that adds insight into how creation functions. I won't read the Hawaiian, which translate as the darkness slips into light. So darkness and light are not polar opposites of an infinite spectrum, a vast distance apart. Instead, creation is like the experience of an actual dawn. The thin veil between night and day is a liminal space so subtle and gradual as to be almost imperceptible. The shaman's mind opens to the hidden truths of the unseen, because according to this wisdom, there is virtually no distance between what we can perceive and what we can't. And from here, we can't help but come upon the spiritual paradox in everything. What seems big is small. What seems strong is weak. What seems easy is difficult. What seems disappointing is beneficial. And every other iteration of opposites that you can imagine. So what I'm getting at with it, what I'm getting at in, in talking about Poe is that is that whatever is going on in the world, particularly all the things that are going on right now or going on in your life, that may be difficult, that the hidden reality underneath it is is always the creative source. And it's in the darkness, it's in that which we cannot see that that brings us the light of a new awareness. So when something bad is happening in your life or something bad happening in the world, it's a light bulb. And it means that it, it, it is the beginning of something because according to this wisdom, it's in the darkness that manifest reality it, it exists, that the light of a new awareness exists. And we can all feel this now in that there is so much darkness on the planet. And yet we can all feel that it's substantive, uh, uh, structural beneficial change. We can all feel that, right? And, that is, and, and so implied in the darkness is the light. And implied in what seems bad to us uh, is the light of a new awareness. So when someone comes to me and they're, and they're you know, they're telling the, the, their relationship's breaking up or they're having problems or they're, you know, you know, I know that the hidden gifts of the soul are contained in the hardships, not just some of the time, all of the time. And so that means to enter into what does, what's underneath, what's, what can't I see in this difficulty? Uh, and when you, can, when you can know that there is something there and it's leading to the light of a new awareness, then you can work with it. That is, that is a basic premise in shamanic healing. So what I want to do is I want to do a shamanic journey into the Po, and this will all become clear. So... Um, uh, if you've never done Shamanic Journey before, let me just give you some, some instructions. Most of you are, are, are familiar um, with me. Uh, so don't worry. I'm going to guide you through the whole thing. Don't worry about making, if I'm making it up, if you think you're making it up, just agree with yourself that you're making it up and keep going. Um, um, you, there's no right way to journey. It might be that you experience it like watching a movie, but probably not. It might be that you hear something. It might be that you just follow along with my voice. It might be snippets of images. It, you might feel it kinesthetically in your body. There's no right way, there's no right way to do it. And don't worry about it, we'll, we'll find it together. Traditionally, this is done lying down. And so I invite you to, if you want to, but you can do it sitting up as well. You can turn off your camera, lie down, and I'm gonna guide you into a journey to look at, uh, and the purpose of this journey is to enter into the hidden truth underneath, the Po, the darkness, that which contains the seeds of creation. And that's what, that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do. So get comfortable for your next shamanic journey, journey into the Po. So you can turn off your cameras if you want, make yourself comfortable, close your eyes. I know it's 8.30, but I, or it's not even 8.30, 8.04. Uh, but I'd love you to just, um, uh, just allow yourself to be comfortable and see if you can just stay with me. I know it's late. Uh, for some of you, but uh, try not to fall, try to avoid sleepitation. And instead, uh, just stay with me. We're doing work here. We're doing work on your life and work on what's going on on the planet. There's so much darkness, so much difficulty happening on the planet. And this is a way in which we can begin to see the seeds of a new way of being in that darkness. Good, so feel all the meeting points between the back of your body and the floor or the cushion or the chair that you're sitting on and just allow yourself to relax into that. Allow yourself to breathe. Let go of uh, any worry that you're doing it right. 
that there's a way to do this. Just let yourself relax. What we're doing is we're entering into a conscious daydream. You did this as a, as a child and we're doing it now. And it's in that conscious daydream where we access wisdom, power, spirit, beauty. Good. So allow yourself to feel as if in some way you're, you're sinking into what we call in the Hawaiian tradition, the Waena, the garden, the sacred garden. So this is your internal place. It's place of safety and sacredness and comfort and great beauty. So allow yourself to imagine that you're either escalating down a staircase or down a waterfall or through a cave or down a set of root systems underneath a tree into your sacred garden. This is a place that is just for you. This is a place where you can access wisdom, spirit. We're entering into the hidden realms. And as you become aware of this place, know that everything in this place is also aware of you and everything can respond to your thoughts. This is an unconditionally loving place that is just for you. Good, so just take a look around, sense what's around you. Are you in a, a meadow, uh, by, by, by a beach, near a wooded forest? whatever that is for you. Notice what's around you. Notice the sky. What is the color of the sky? What is the sky? Uh, are there clouds in the sky? What time of day might it be? Notice what you're standing on or sitting on. And just breathe into those qualities of safety, comfort, sacredness, beauty. Luxuriate in this place. On your next inhale, there might be uh, a, an aroma, smells of flowers or sea spray, smells of the earth. Maybe there's wind in this place. Maybe you feel a gust of wind on your body. There might be sounds, sounds of water, sounds of insects, sounds of the wind wrestling. Just begin to luxuriate in this place. This place that is just for you, your sacred garden. It lives in your heart. Very good. Now I want you to begin to just follow a, a, a heart's tug, a little curiosity to go in a certain direction. So just find yourself wandering. You'll know the right direction. Find yourself wandering in a certain direction. And up ahead of you, you'll sense the an opening, a portal into some sort of a path, a path into a dense forest or jungle. And as you begin to just be curious and to walk on that path, you'll sense that it becomes dark very, very, very quickly as, as the, the sunlight has been blocked by the dense foliage around you. Feel that and feel the temperature become so much cooler. And it's difficult to even see, it's so dark on this path, but you can feel the path beneath your feet. And this is the path of Po, the realm of the invisible truths that underlie everything. And as you walk, what I'd like you to do in this dark place is just bring to mind some difficulties that you're having, some fears, some uncertainty that have been present for you during this time in your life. This could be about the pandemic. It could be about political unrest, some other kind of fear, something about yourself and your own life circumstances, something about a relationship or your job. And know that as you traverse this path, we will find the hidden truth that will lead to a new reality about these difficulties. So as you walk up ahead of you, there's a flicker of life. As you come to a clearing and there is a spirit guide waiting for you in a clearing on this dark path. 
This could be a being in human form. It could be an animal. It could be a light being. It could be an orb. It could be anything, but this is a loving, benevolent spirit guide that is just for you. That will help you understand the invisible truth contained in your hardships. This, gu this guide will help to bring you into the light of a new awareness, into the darkness, and into an understanding that has not yet been realized or seen or yet understood. So this guide may take you somewhere or show you something about these difficulties or these fears that you hadn't considered yet or you hadn't known. It may even reveal the ultimate positive result of these difficulties. So in conjunction with the spirit guides help and direction it may also be that you actively imagine and create a new awareness or a new positive reality that lies embedded within your difficulties. You have the ability to create anything that you want. And if you want to, if you decide that you want to decide what is the new benefit, then you can do that too. Or you may just allow yourself, you may just want to be receptive and allow the guide to take you to help you and show you what's underneath this difficulty. So what is the new awareness that is held within this, these struggles or these fears? Let your guide help to take you there. Feel yourself with your guide's help being drawn to and creating a new dawn for yourself. Find that new dawn, a hopeful new day where the difficulties make a different kind of sense. So in a moment, I'm going to begin rattling. And as I do, invite in the dawning of a new awareness about these difficulties, these fears that have been held in the darkness and are now revealing themselves to you. Good journey.
Good. Wherever you are now, just begin to start to retrace your steps. Wherever you've been, just retrace your steps all the way back. Back to everywhere you've been, everything you've seen, everything you've experienced. Retrace your steps all the way back to your sacred place. Good. And just release your guide, give thanks to your guide in whatever way feels right, or your guide can hang around with you if you want. And as you're back in your sacred place, notice, is the quality of light different? What are you feeling now? What are you sensing now? Has there been a shift or a change? A dawning of a new awareness? A bright new morning? Or it might be something that feels heavier for you right now. Something that you're still not sure about or something that hurts and you begin, you've begun the process of understanding what that is. Whatever it is for you, just find some cozy spot in your sacred place to just allow this, whatever you've experienced to just integrate in whatever way it's supposed to. Feel it in your body. Feel your soft heart as you allow this to continue to integrate into your consciousness and your awareness. You might also visualize how your life might need to change with this awareness or what needs to be addressed in terms of your sense of self, how you think about yourself, how you think about yourself in relationship to others, to the world. And just know that that process is already happening, already written. Or it might be that you sense in some way that the difficulties happening in the world, on the earth, in this country, that they do serve a purpose, leading us all toward an ascension, toward the light that is the value of love, interconnection, humility, kindness. And just take one last look at the whole landscape of your journey, the path and the spirit guide and wherever the spirit guide took you. and find that however it is that you entered your sacred garden, that waterfall or that staircase, whatever it was, and you could say goodbye to your Wayena, to your garden for now, knowing this is a place that you can always return to, holding this entire experience in your heart, begin to now exit this place, as you feel yourself now returning to this, your space and the room that you're in and gently, without even opening your eyes, just reorient yourself with the four walls around you, the ceiling and the floor, finding your perfect center. And making some gentle movements. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes, come back into the space. Good. So as you transition, what I'd like you to do now is I'd like everyone to just write in the chat one sentence to just one sentence that you'd like to share with the group. Just one sentence about whatever it is that you've experienced in yourself, about the world, about tonight, whatever that is for you. Something that you'd like to share. It doesn't need to make sense to us, but just one sentence. Begin to take some time to type that in so we can all hear where everyone's hearts are after this experience. 
So do that now. And Emily's going to read those. Please take a moment to formulate it. Just one sentence. There were so many scary monsters on the path. Reaching out to friends, family, people who have touched me. Could see all things that need changing, but could only hear a clock ticking. Mm -hmm. Do not be afraid to move forward. Spirit is leading me forward. Go deeper within to connect without. Illuminating light through me. Being myself is all that matters. Writing it all right. Healing is in process. Learning about my gifts by deeply trusting myself. I can trust myself even though I feel scared. Beautiful child, you are enough. You have always been so. I released emotional shrapnel from inside my heart with the help of my guide and received everlasting healing and well being. You can trap yourself in a box, but you know the way out. Magic needs darkness, otherwise we'd see how every trick is done. I felt like the dawn in now. The key is to find a place of loving community, releasing and opening to the light of the new day. It wasn't a disaster. You are just where you need to be. My father's memory is the part of me that loves myself unconditionally. Be who I am without thinking. It is clear you have choice. You are strong, leading me forward. It's time, but one dark person whose purpose in the journey is not now, but is possible. But I'm just re gonna read this last yep. section. Is there one more? Um, oh. LA, yeah. Go ahead, Emily. I feel a sense of deep peace and that's where I am traveling has never been more joyful or more peaceful and that evolution is all about finding my home, coming to my true home. So grateful at last I am me. Very good. I'm just going to read this last part on, on, the, on Poe. Uh, the darkness slips into light. Remember that is the, that is the, uh, the line from the creation chant. The darkness slips into light. There's no, there's very minimal space between the darkness and the light. The first line of the Kumulipo, the creation chant of Hawaii, adds further texture to this discussion of creation. I won't read the Hawaiian, but the Hawaiian, it's been translated, at the time that turned the heat of the earth, the active seed transforms the earth with passion. This points toward the hypothesis that there was never an actual beginning to creation, that all creation happened spontaneously of its own accord. It suggests a joyful intention, crea creation occurring for no other reason than to experience more of itself. Well, that sounds like love, doesn't it? The Hawaiians believe that the creative void of the Po is not only the realm of the gods, but also the dwelling place of our Kane, our individual God self. If this is true and creation happens all by itself as an act of love, then we can assume love no matter what our experience because each of us is an individual expression born out of that love. The Hawaiian proverb, hey punavai ka he vale ke aloha, means love is the spring that flows freely. Love is boundless and available to everyone. The shaman trusts in the goodness and rightness of life by seeing it as a creation born of benevolence, inevitability, and the spark of love contained within each of us. So thank you so much. I do want to, someone asked a question, so I do want to say yes, the na'au, that two inches below your navel, that would be the second chakra. There's nothing new under the sun, kids. I just like the way the Hawaiians say it the best. Good, so uh, um, uh, I think that uh, Sarah is going to close us out, and then Emily. Sounds good, wow, wow, wow. On behalf of One Spirit, and I'll be so bold as to speak for this entire circle here tonight, Jonathan. Thank you so much. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Rianne, for creating the sacred space for us, for giving so generously of your hearts, of your time, of your wisdom. Thank you to Jamie and her fabulous feline for the tech support. 
in just a few minutes, Emily will release the circle and release us out into the world, perhaps with transformed perspectives. If you found these practices useful, and who didn't, don't forget to pick up a copy of The Shaman's Mind. The links are in the chat. And I'll be putting a few more links in in just a moment to keep up to date for the next shamanic circle, because who wants more of this, right? Um, I'll also recommend uh, Jonathan's website, jonathanhammond.com, to keep track of where he is and what he's doing. Uh, you can also sign up for the One Spirit newsletter at onespirit.org to find out other things happening around our virtual halls. And that's all I've got. Thank you so much. Over to you, Emily. Thank you. So let's close the circle together. And let's do that by connecting in, remembering those connections we've made. And close your eyes. Feel what you've created for yourself. Feel the connections we have with one another. That bond of aloha connecting this sacred circle. You are a precious, invaluable part of this circle and of healing for the planet. So thank you for being here. And feel into everything that you've created, all the goodness, the healing, the connection, the growth that you've experienced tonight that you have within you. And we are going to share this. We're going to send it out. So feel that fullness within you. Let's take a deep breath together as a circle, breathing in with everything you are, everything you've created. And out. So feel into all of that and start to rub your hands together. We're gonna to create some heat. Feel everything that is within your heart space and we're going to share this because we are in the essence of aloha. So we're going to share our life force. We're going to blow through our hands. Kamai, blow with the breath of spirit up and out wherever it can be received to all of those who need it, wherever they are, wherever they may be on the planet. So let's do our part for them. On the count of three, we're going to blow through our hands, make it strong. One, two, three. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you so much. Stay in touch. We'll be back in, in September. Uh, read my book or not. It's really great to have you all. Thank you so much.